I grew up at Coonabarabran, um, probably listening to Bob Freeman as a young uh, young person for a long time. Um, uh, we, my old man actually was uh, his stock and station agent for a long time, so uh, knew all about the, the benefit of the tropicals, particularly in light country up there. Um, and then when we bought this block in 2016, um, I started to start thinking about them because there's some pretty light, uh, sandy, acidic soils on here that should really suit those uh, subtropicals. So it um, took a few years to actually get around to doing them, but yeah, the drought really sort of made us want to think about getting more autumn feed. Probably the biggest barriers to start off with um, were the nervousness about the, the winters that we have down here and how wet it can get. Um, and the altitude that we're at on some of this ground here. There was a, a couple of people at uh, Cadal and at Cumnock that we spoke to, and then we went to a couple of the LLS workshops that sort of got us belief that what we thought originally was probably achievable in this area. And they're really temperature driven. They'll go reproductive as soon as they start to become moisture stressed, um, but they'll reactivate and start growing leaf again. So you can get a, a rainfall event in December, they'll shoot and go grow hard. And then if you have a dry January, February, they'll just go into a dormancy mode. And then February, late February rain again, you'll get another big flush of feed back through there. So the, we're you know, a 50 mil rainfall, 600 mil rainfall, 50 mil a month area. Um, but in that January, February, March, we might get 150 in one month and nothing for the next two months. So it's our ability to grow a large bulk of feed off a single or a a two, a two hit rain event. It's that autumn feed gap, the ability to transfer uh, summer rain into autumn feed. Um, to me, that's always a pinch period every year. So this year was really evident as well. We were able to lock up our um, temperate pastures and graze our subtropicals. Um, look, it's nearly June now, and we've only just pulled them off about a couple of weeks ago. So that's let our uh, temperate pastures become knee high. It was pretty uh, much the same as I'd do for any other um, uh, temperate um, pasture planting. Three years of cropping. Um, on the country that we did here, we actually did back-to-back -back cropping where we put cowpeas in over the summertime. Um, really got the organic matter up and going in those, um, in those uh, lighter country. Lighter soils got some nitrogen levels up. Um, and then uh, we first started in, Jan in October, November 2018 um, on a wing and a prayer of a bit of a storm back in late October. And that was my first lesson of a complete failure. Obviously, as we went into that first 2019 summer, it was pretty ordinary. The thing that I'd say is you've got to get in in front of the moisture. Um, you can't wait until the rain falls before you sow. You've actually got to have it in the ground when the rain is falling because uh, you need those couple of wet, humid days to get the seeds up and going. And you've got to sow it that close to the surface that if you try and do that after it, you're, it's already gone when you're trying to get it up. Seed depth is probably the number one thing. I think that uh, led to my initial failure. Um, outside of the lack of rainfall we had, um, I think I was probably uh, half a centimetre too deep. It is really just at the surface and then we put a lot of um, downward pressure on our press wheels to get some really good seed soil contact at surface level and then hope you get that two or three days of moisture to follow that up. So yeah, we've got about um, probably 80 to 90 hectares. Um, of that, we've probably lost some of it due to the last three wet winters. So we're actually changing the way we're trying to do it with some co-planting with some um, prairie grass and some more winter, highly winter active grasses as well. Grazing management is probably about letting it go reproductive and actually getting some seed back down into the ground. We probably have struggled, uh, we grazed it in a couple of paddocks too hard to try to get our clovers established um, in the next autumn. Um, so we've probably swapped around the way we're actually doing that now. We're looking to establish our clovers um, and then either cut hay with them and then so straight into with the digit after that sort of thing. So it's really about trying to work out where we can fit in to get the most out of it and protecting that digit.